Okay, now this one. Huh? A particle moves in a horizontal circle of radius 15 cm inside an inverted ho uh, smooth hollow hemisphere as shown in figure uh, 4. Okay, uh, sketch a free body diagram showing the forces act, uh, acting on the object and calculate the speed of the particle. Okay, actually, this diagram is uh, a little bit, I think, got technical problems. Um, uh, it misses out the hemisphere, the circular hemisphere. Actually, it looks like, like this one. Let me draw it out for you, yeah. Yeah, it looks like this. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sorry for the uh, technical problem. So, it's actually a hemisphere like this. Hollow. Huh? And there is, it's just like a, a bowl, you know. It's just like a, a bowl. Uh, a bowl. Where there is a, a particle or a marble. Maybe a marble. Um, rotate. Uh, inside the make a uh, circulating inside the bowl uh, okay so uh, this is the center of circle over here yeah you can see there is a center of circle over here okay well so what are the forces first of all we need to identify what kind of forces acting on the object so our target is the object yeah let me give, make a circle yeah around the object okay so this is our target so what are the forces acting on this object? What are the forces acting on this object? We have what force? Uh, first of all, this object it is uh, it is uh, contact in contact with the surface, isn't it? The bowl, but the surface is at an inclined plane, isn't it? Inclined. Uh, so the normal force must be always perpendicular, perpendicular to the surface. Uh, this is the normal force right uh, and then it, it has its own weight uh, it has its own weight is that is that it yeah i think that's it yeah and it's a smooth smooth so no friction yeah no no friction okay no friction uh all right right cool huh? so no friction okay so only the normal force and the weight and where's the Centripetal acceleration. Uh, acceleration is to the left because the center of circle is at the left hand side. So our centripetal acceleration is uh, this way. Uh, to the left. Yeah? To the left. Okay, we need to draw a free boy diagram. Okay, free boy diagram. Uh, FBD. Featuring the ball as only one point. Uh, remember, it's only one point. Okay, but that's one thing I want. There is one thing I want to tell you, okay, about this hemisphere. This normal force is actually uh, uh, located on top of the radius of the hemisphere. Do you realize that? This picture is actually not uh, not accurate enough. Yeah, not accurate enough. Maybe let me draw another hemisphere for you. Let me draw it out for you. Ah, okay. I drawn to you already everything. You see that? Ah, so I purposely draw like this, uh, so that uh, you can easily identify what's happening. Yeah, how to find the angle theta here? Ah, the reason why I draw this because uh, I will just want to show you one important thing here is the normal force. The normal force in the hemisphere. The normal force actually is on the radius of the hemisphere uh, this one is not accurate this one is not accurate because i cannot draw i want to draw perpendicular to the surface yet when the perpendicular it doesn't the normal force doesn't seems like going to the center of the hemisphere actually the normal force is towards the center of hemisphere uh, this is the important thing i want to show you this one this part i just want to show you this part Ah, where the normal force, see that? This part is the most important. So, the most important thing here is the normal force, okay, 
this normal force which is perpendicular to the surface perpendicular to the surface this normal force is actually on the radius of the hemisphere radius of the sphere okay uh, the normal force remember the normal force is uh, on the radius of the sphere you know why because normal force is perpendicular to the surface radius of circle also perpendicular to the surface so both the normal force and the radius of circle both are perpendicular to the surface that's why the normal force is on the radius of the hemisphere uh, the normal force is on the radius of hemisphere and this is important you know why this help this knowledge help us to find the angle theta this theta is uh, important for us to resolve the normal force into x component and y component for us to continue in this question ah you see that so okay here here the, the here is the radius of the hemisphere 30 cm okay and the normal force is also on the radius of the circle yeah? radius of the hemisphere and this uh, this this radius of circle where the normal force is located on top of it okay this radius of circle is also 30 cm uh, this is 30 cm this is also 30 cm understand and from the ball to the center of the circle which is the smaller circle here the small the smaller circle here uh, the radius of the circle you know the radius of the circle is 15 cm uh, 15 cm okay so you so from here you can see hypotenuse here hypotenuse is 30 cm and here the adjacent adjacent side is 15 cm so you can find the angle theta for your normal force and once you find your angle theta label it on the free boy diagram understand uh, label it on on your free boy diagram okay let's find our theta first okay our theta so uh, we can use cosine theta cosine theta why cosine theta because 15 cm is adjacent uh, so adjacent divide by 30 uh, actually both of these are cm uh, you can convert to meter also yeah but it's the same thing because um, uh, yeah you convert to meter also it's the same yeah you can maintain as cm for this one yeah just to find the angle theta uh, but better you convert all to SI unit lah. Never mind, yeah? Better all you convert to SI unit. Okay, so what's the angle theta here? What's the angle theta here? Let's find out. Yeah, let's find out. Ah, I got the answer already. You know what? Uh, it is 60 degree. This angle theta is 60 degree. So we can label. Uh, we can label over here is 60 degree. It is 60. Uh, we need this angle theta because we want to resolve the normal force into x component and y component later on yeah for us to solve the centripetal acceleration okay so that's why it's important to know that the normal force is actually on the radius of the hemisphere that's important okay um all right uh okay so this is the free body diagram remember only have one point yeah uh, only has one point to represent the ball eh? only have one point and uh, the normal force the weight okay uh, that's it yeah uh, draw the axis first x and y axis to guide you yeah so the center of circle is actually at the left hand side yeah this is the uh, this is the center of circle uh, the center of circle is actually actually the left hand side of the the ball okay just a point eh? And uh, because the center of circle is at the left hand side, so that the centripetal acceleration is towards the left, towards the left. Okay. Okay. So you can, um, you know, put positive and negative sign. So for x component, it has acceleration. If got acceleration, compare with acceleration. Same direction with acceleration. All the forces same direction with acceleration is positive. Opposite acceleration is negative. Uh, but for the y component, there's no acceleration no acceleration so we just use the basic one for going up positive going down negative okay good now next is we want to find the speed uh, we want to find the speed v yeah we want to find the speed of particle v 
So for this one, we need to do X component and Y component. Uh, X component and sorry, X and Y component. Uh, to continue with our questions. All right. Uh, let's continue. Yeah. Okay. So let us do it. Yeah. So we can uh, just basically use this free body diagram. Uh, just arrange it to a little bit here. Okay, that's good. So now, before we continue, uh, okay, what is a mass? Huh? It give you the mass. No mass is given. Huh? No mass is given. Okay, now mind, I think it can be cut off later on. Okay. Okay, now build equation. For S component, it has acceleration. So, total F equal to MA in S component. So, we put total FX. Total fx equal to ma. Uh, this one uh, equal to. So this one is centripetal acceleration, and this resultant force in x component is actually the centripetal force. Okay. okay. Whereas the y component, there's no acceleration, right? There's no acceleration, so equal to zero. Uh, y component no acceleration, so zero. Okay, now resolve the normal force into X and Y component before we continue. So, resolve it. Resolve, resolve. Okay. Resolve. So, we have, here we have. Okay, let us resolve. Uh, so, over here we have uh, normal force cosine 60 because adjacent. Adjacent is cosine. And then uh, y component is opposite the angle. So opposite the angle is sine. Uh, opposite is sine. Okay. Uh, so we got it ready. Now look at the uh, x component. X component we have acceleration. So n cos we have n cos sixty only. We know uh, only one force. And this force n cos sixty is same direction with acceleration. So it's positive. Uh, so positive. Uh, so we just put this value as positive. Oops, what's happening? Uh, is positive. Okay, n cos sixty is positive because same direction with acceleration. So just put that as a uh, m. Uh, we want to find uh, v, isn't it? Uh, so we just convert ac. Yeah, ac is actually v square over r. Yeah or r omega square if the question asks for angular speed if angular speed then we use omega we use omega but now it's just speed speed means the linear speed uh, linear speed so v lah so we just use v uh, so the ac we substitute with mv square omega uh, the ac we substitute with v square over r uh, so that is the uh, okay that is the answer okay so uh, that's it and then for y component, it has what? It has the, uh, okay, n sine 60 and weight. Uh, so n sine 60 is positive, weight is negative. Uh, they will cancel each other, become zero. So n sine 60 is positive, mg is negative, the weight is negative, uh, uh, equal to zero. Okay, so. Uh, then we rearrange the formula. Uh, this is n sine 60 degree. Okay, this all a degree. Uh, equal to mg. Uh, okay, here, can you see what's happening here? Uh, we can sim do simultaneous equation. This is equation 1. This is equation 2. Uh, what do you do? You just divide. Uh, you divide 2 with 1. Because sine divided by cos, you get tangent. Uh, sine divided by cos, you get tangent. So, okay, let me, let me, con okay. For a second. Never mind. So, uh, 2 divided by 1, okay, means uh, you get uh, n sine 60, Divide. Why not use 1 divided by 2? Uh, I use 2 divided by 1 because I want to use sine divided by cos. You get tangent. We do want cos divided by sine that you get cotangent. You understand? Uh, 2 divided by 1. So sine divided by cos. You get tangent. Uh, and then here top is mg. Below is mv square over r. 
So you can cut the common, you know, the normal force you can cut, the mass also you can cut. And what's left is, oh, sorry, and what's left is sine divided by cos, you get tangent, tangent 60 degree, uh, tangent 60, sine divided by cos, you get tangent. And then the G, okay, I don't, I don't want the R here, I don't want the R, so I multiply by, I multiply by R top, multiply below also R. Uh, actually, this multiply R, multiply R, multiply R, this is actually multiplied by 1. You understand that? Because this, this can be, this can be cut off, you know, equal to like multiply 1. Uh, but we don't really want to cut off. <laughs> uh, we, def we just put like that because uh, I can, I can uh, cancel, you know, the R here with the R here. Ah, you understand? So what, uh, finally I get what? I get uh, RG on top, below just left with V square. No more denominator. No more denominator. Ah, so I can find. So lastly, I can, uh, you know, what's the R again? What's the radius of the circle? Uh, radius of the circle is, the radius of the circle is 15 cm, you know, 15 cm. Not the 30, ah. Not the 30. The, the, the ball is not, the ball is not on top of here. The ball is not on top of here, making circle over here. Uh -huh, yeah? uh, the ball is at the below here. The below here. So the circle is just 15 cm. So this is the R. Uh, this is the R only. Yeah? Not, not this one. Huh? The R is only the 15 cm. And change it to meter. Huh? Change it to meter. Oh, so don't, be careful. Huh? Be careful. Don't careless. Careless is a disease. Okay, uh, so callus is a disease, right? Uh, so this is 15 cm, so divide by 100, it gets 0 0.15 meter. Uh, 0 0.15 meter. Okay, and then multiply by G. G is 9.81. Okay, and then V. Ah, you can find your V already. So what's your V? Let's calculate your V. Yeah? Okay, so the answer I get is... What's the answer? Let us review it. 0 0.92 0 0.921 922 eh? oh, 0 0.92 lah. Okay. Meter per second. Ah, that's the answer. 0 0.92 Is that correct? 0 0.92 Yes, it's correct. Yeah. Ah, 0 0.92 meter per second. That's correct. Okay. So that's all for these questions. All right, build equation x and y components. Yeah, use back the chapter forces. Yeah, Newton's second law to solve it because uh, all this while centripetal force is just the resultant force, like Newton's second law, uh, f equal to m a. Okay, so nothing new. Uh, so that's all for this question. Yeah, thank you.